Hi, I am Dr. Suchitra Reddy, IVF consultant at Motherhood Hospital, Sajapur. So today I am going to speak about ovulation induction and IUI process. So many couples and very young couples come to us with the fertility issues. So as soon as they come to us, it is not like when they come to an IVF department, it is only the IVF treatment we have to undergo. So we can go to the other treatment processes wherein we do ovulation induction is the first process and the next is IUI process. So what are the steps which are involved in the ovulation induction and IUI process? Uh, when the patient comes to us, the basic investigations like thyroid, her prolactin levels and egg reserve which is AMH test is done and sperm analysis for the male partner is done. So once all these things are normal we ask to do a scan on second or third day of the periods which is called as antral follicular count. So once we do all the investigations and if the couple are having all the normal uh, parameters then we start a medication which is called as ovulation induction drug. So this is usually started between second or fourth day of the periods. It is given for a period of five days and once we give this medications this will help in improving the uh, egg uh, size <coughs> that is uh, follicular size it helps to improve. So once we uh, do uh, give this medications we do a scan on ninth or tenth day. Usual size which we expect on this date is somewhere between 13 mm to 16 mm. So once this size is there, we further do a scan on 11th or 12th day and once it reaches around 18 to 20 mm, we give a trigger injection for the ovulation to happen. So during this period of time, we ask the couples to have alternate day sexual contact. So we are inducing ovulation and we are timing the intercourse during the time of ovulation. After ovulation induction, what exactly is the success rate? It is usually between 8 to 12 percent, like 100 couples if we are doing the ovulation induction, out of which 8 or 10 percent of the couples might become pregnant. So we usually try 2 months to 3 months this kind of ovulation induction. Ovulation is happening, sperm parameters are fine, still pregnancy is not happening. Then we usually do what is called as tubal patency test. This is a SSG test or a HSG test. So which is done usually on 6th or 9th day of the periods. Here we put a fluid in case of an SSG if we are doing and check for the tubal opening if it is there or in case of an HSG we inject a dye and check for the tubal patency. So once we come to know if the patency is normal then we go for the next step which is similar to your ovulation induction we give you medications from second or third day of periods for over a period of five days. The, uh, similar scans are done over on 9th or 10th day and once the follicle is around 18 to 20 mm as we give the trigger injection post the trigger around 36 to 40 hours later we check for the ovulation so on the day of ovulation we ask the husband to give a semen sample and that is processed it is washed and only the fast moving sperms are deposited inside the uterus so here we are manually uh, inserting the, that is artificial insemination of the specimen inside the uterus is done so here the success rate usually is somewhere between 10 to 12 percent. So people ask so what is the difference between the ovulation induction and IUI. So in case of an ovulation induction when you have sexual contact the semen is usually deposited inside the vagina. From there the fast moving sperms has to enter the uterus and from the uterus they have to enter the fallopian tube wherein the egg is there they have to fertilize and cause further process. In IUI the only differentiation is instead of depositing the semen in the vagina we process the sperms and the fast moving sperms are deposited inside the uterus. Here the mouth of the uterus that is cervix is bypassed and deposited inside the uterus. From the uterus the perm has to move to the fallopian tube and cause fertilization. The other steps are all similar in both the ovulation induction and IUI process. So since we are bypassing the cervix there are some cases where immunological issues that is cervix might not allow the sperms to enter inside the uterus. So in such cases this might be helpful or when there are reduced number of fast moving sperms in a male parameter in such cases when we remove the dead sperms and all those things it might be helpful in the IUI process. 
so these are the changes or these are the differences which are there with ovulation induction and iui and once we do the iui at least three to four minimum cycles of an iui can be performed to a couple still pregnancy is not happening if all the other parameters are all normal also we call them as unexplained infertility we don't know what exactly is the reason egg is there and the sperms are also fine still pregnancy is not happening we don't know whether there is a fertilization issue or the formation of embryo itself is not happening or after the formation of embryo it is not entering into the uterus or implantation is not happening so these are all unknown factors so we will not be able to understand the scans itself so further next step has to be gone so that will be ivf process which will be recommended after three to four iui failed pregnancy or failed iui then the next step is ivf thank you for any further information or anything you can always contact us at motherhood sajapur hospital thank you